So it is Wednesday. We are going to be doing factoring today. We're going to put the fun in function because we're going to factor some functions today. And factoring is we need that in order to go for tomorrow. Tomorrow when we solve functions, okay? that's what we need to, we need to be able to factor because it'll make our, our lives easier tomorrow. Okay? So here we go. Okay? Four keys to factoring. Okay? So the first is always look for a GCF. Whenever you're factoring, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look for a greatest common factor. Something that goes into every single one of your terms, no matter how many terms there are. Okay. In this particular case, I'm looking at terms. Remember, terms are separated by an addition or a subtraction sign. So I'm looking at those two, and I would say to myself, self, 4 goes into 8 and the 20. It's the biggest number that goes into both of those two numbers, and they both have an x term in it. So I would factor out a 4x. That's going to leave me with, then, 4 times what gives me 8? That's 2. x times what gets me x squared? That's x. 4 times what gets me 20? That's 5. x times what gets me x? That's 1. So I'm left with that. Okay? Quick refresher on greatest common factor. Always do that first. Then. We're going to look and see if they are a difference. If I have a binomial, and this only works with a binomial, two terms, I'm going to look and see if they are a difference of perfect squares. So I would look first at my first term. The number needs to be a perfect square. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, all of those perfect squares. The variable has to have an even exponent on it. Okay? Even exponents are perfect square exponents, so that checks out there. Then. I have to look at the second term. Is that a perfect square term? Again, same process. Look at the number, look at the exponent. Okay? Perfect square number, even exponent works. But the kicker is this one. Okay? That's got to be a subtraction. Difference is subtraction. Okay? So it's got to be a subtraction sign there. If that's the case, then it follows my a squared minus b squared being a minus b times a plus b. So this one would factor to be 3x minus 1 and 3x plus 1. Because 3x quantity squared gets me 9x squared, 1 squared gets me 1. So 3x is my a, 1 is my b on that one. Next thing to look at is the product of two binomials. Okay? And so on this one, what you're basically looking at is you are looking at making two sets of parentheses and just trying different numbers to make them work. These first two terms right here and here need to multiply together to be that one. Okay? So I would try 2x and x there. These second two terms here and here that you have to fill in have to multiply to be that one. So I would probably go with 5 there and 4 there. And then we got to look at the signs. I want this one to be negative and this one to be positive because then 
my insides here give me positive 5x and my outsides there give me negative 8x. When I add them together, I get my negative 3x. And that, again, practice will get you quicker at that um, and doing those. Uh, but it's just a matter of really, it's the only time in math that I say guess and check. Okay? You just got to kind of try some different numbers and check them to make sure that they work. Okay? Oops, now I gotta get, bring it back up to bring it back down. Okay? And then there's cubics. And we'll have, I have a whole slide towards the end of the, of this video that are dealing with the cubics and the cubic formulas. Okay? So those are the combination. On top of that, you've got factoring by grouping. You've got, um, a combination of those where you might have the GCF first and then you might have the product of two binomials. And then one of the product of your two binomials becomes one of those is a perfect square. So we can intermix and intertwine all of those together. Okay? If the directions say factor completely, you need to factor until something cannot be, until your what you have cannot be factored anymore. And you always have to check that to make sure. Okay? So looking at the numbers here, what goes into 98 and what goes into 14. The first thing that I would check is I would check if 98 can be divisible by 14. 98 divided by 14 is in fact 7. So I could factor out a 14 here. I'd be left with 7x minus 1. Now, how do I go about checking these? Well, you check them by doing what we learned yesterday. Okay? You check them by doing the distribution or by doing the multiplication or by doing anything that you need to do. Okay? So if I check this back in, if I distribute this 14 back in, I would get 98x minus 14, which is what I started with. So we are done and factored completely because 7x minus 1 has no other factoring to do. Okay. Looking at this next one, first I would factor out a 2x because all of the terms are even, so I can for sure factor out a 2, and then I, all the terms have an x. So that would leave me with 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. Now, yes, you have factored it because you factored out a 2x, but we don't know if it's factored completely until we make sure that this trinomial can be factored. So we're going to take a quick peek at that. I would try 3x and 2x first, start in the middle, work my way out. And then, so we need to get to 11, so if I went 2 and 2, that would be, so if I go 2 and 2 here, then that would be 4x and 6x combined. It does not get me 11x, so I can't go with that one. Okay. So let's try a different combination here. What if I try 4 there and 1 there? If I try it that way and I go positives on both, then I get 8x there, 3x there. Those both combine to be 11x, which is what I needed. So complete factorization here would be that 2x comes along. It's tagging along for the ride. 3x plus 4 and 2x plus 1. If I distribute the two parentheses back together, 
I would get 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. Then distribute in my 2x, I'd get 12x cubed plus 22x plus 8 there. You can always check it by multiplying it out. Some more examples of factoring completely. First, I would factor out a 5g cubed. That's going to leave me with g squared plus 16. g squared here is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square, but we are not subtracting. So therefore, that is my factor completely. If it were a subtraction sign there, I could have the, I would have the difference of perfect squares and I would be able to go on further, but I can't. So we're done. Okay. Factoring out a 3x, that leaves me with 25, oops, I forgot the 5 part of the 25, 25x squared plus 10x plus 1. Seeing if this trinomial can factor, if I go 5x, 5x, 1 and 1, both are pluses, so both of these would have to be pluses, okay? And then, so my, out here I would, or in here I would get 5x, in here I would get 5x, that gives me 10x, that works out. These two orange ones multiply together to this one, that distributes into that one, so we get 3x times 5x plus 1 times 5x plus 1. You also might see this written as 3x times 5x plus 1 quantity squared because it's written or because that's what it truly means. It's a shorter way of writing. Factoring and factoring and factoring. Oh, as promised, here are the, the cubics that we so near and dear to our heart. I would pause the video here for a minute to write these formulas down. You are going to want these formulas because these cubic formulas are helpful when you're factoring the cubics. Welcome back to those who paused the video. So basically how to explain those cubic formulas is we look for what is being cubed in the first term and that becomes our A. So we would write the what is being cubed first and what is being cubed second with the same sign. Then I square it, square the first one, Multiply them together, square the second one. This sign out here is always going to be positive, or always going to be plus. This sign in here is going to be opposite of the sign that you started with. Okay. All right. So let's do this. Let's do. Oops, I guess I should have only gone one and then realized that I had a second one down there. Okay. So I would rewrite this as, well, my perfect cube numbers, 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, uh, 6 is 2, 16, etc. And I'll do that there. Okay. So I would write this as 3x is being cubed. 125 is 5 is being cubed. 
So now 3x is my a and 5 is my b. So we are plus, so I'm following the, the top one. So that would become a, so it would be a plus there, a minus there, and a plus there. My a is 3x, my b is 5, my a would be 3x, and I'd have to square that. I'd have to multiply 3x by 5, and then I would have to square 5, right like that. Okay? So in the end, this becomes 3x plus 5 times the quantity. 3x quantity squared is 9x squared. 3x times 5 is 15x, so it's minus 15x. 5 squared is 25. Now the nice thing about the cubic formula is that this trinomial that you get in the end is not factorable. It's prime, as we like to say in math. So you can only utilize the cubic formula once and get that answer. That trinomial is not factorable. Okay. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to pause the video. Again, uh, do this particular problem, factor it completely, pause it, and then um, I will go through it. Welcome back. First uh, thing I would do here is I would factor out uh, a negative 2 d squared because that would leave me with 8 d cubed minus 1. And now I've got a positive number on my lead coefficient or on my cubic term, if you will. This is 2d quantity cubed. This is 1 cubed. So the negative 2d is coming along for the ride. 2d minus 1. 2d quantity squared is 4d squared. 2d times 1 is 2d. It's plus 2d because I'm opposite my original sign. And then it's plus 1 because 1 squared is 1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my final factor answer for this particular so we've got GCF, we've got difference of perfect squares, we've got uh, factoring trinomials, we've got the cubic formulas, and the last one that I'm going to leave you with today is factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping is a fancy way of saying we're going to factor uh, greatest common factor three times. So the first one, you take the first half of your term. Factoring by grouping only works on an even amount of terms, and it's got to be bigger than 2. Okay? So you take the first half, and you GCF it. So I would factor out an x squared, and that would leave me with x minus 7. Then you take the second half, and you GCF that. And so I would factor out an 8 there, and that leaves me with x minus 7. Then you take that term, or that new expression, and you GCF it. In this particular case, 
there's an x minus 7 in both of those terms, so I can factor out that x minus 7. That's going to leave me with x squared plus 8. x squared plus 8 is a perfect square plus a perfect square, so that is all that can't be factored. So this is my factored completely form of number 3. Again, going through those steps here now in number 4. 9t squared can be factored from that, leaving me with 3t plus 5. Negative 1 can be factored from that, leaving me with 3t plus 5. Again, we like positives whenever we can get them. Both have a 3t plus 5 in them, and that's going to leave me with 9t squared minus 1. 9t squared is a perfect square. 1 is a perfect square, and we have a subtraction sign there, so that is a perfect square minus a perfect square, which is going to leave me with 3t plus 5 times 3t minus 1 times 3t plus 1 as my final factored completely answer. Okay. If you would have stopped at the green line right here, you would not be correct because you have not factored completely. Yes, you factored but you haven't factored completely. Okay? It's kind of like saying you're going to go to Milwaukee. Okay? The green, you stop in Fond du Lac, and you get out of the car and say, Hello, Milwaukee, but you're in Fond du Lac. Okay? You're on your way to your destination, but you haven't gotten all the way there yet. Okay? That concludes today's factoring refresher. Um, now you can do uh, questions number 11 through 16 on the worksheet. Have yourselves a great, grand, and wonderful day. We'll do some more factoring and solving tomorrow in class.